How does token vesting work? How do we make sure that the vesting that we have assumed for a specific token is being followed? How do we allow or ask the blockchain to make sure that the user who's saying that their tokens are vested, they don't get access to them before that time period gets over. GM, 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 what's up clubbers? Welcome to Web3 Club. And in today's video, what we're going to learn is how do we create a very simple token vesting smart contract. This is really going to be the simplest form of vesting where there is just a cliff, like there is nothing, you don't get anything and after a point, you get all the tokens that you were promised. You can of course uh, improve this later on by yourself. If a bunch of people watch this video, share this video, comment on this video and ask me to add series two, add part two of this, part three of this and make this whole a series of vesting, uh, I will gladly do so. But in today's video, we are just going to learn the very simple way of vesting a token, which is minting it and not directly just giving it to the user, but giving it to a smart contract, which holds it for the stipulated time before the user can access it. But before we get started, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you want to send me a message, some if you want my help for a consultation, if you want to sponsor a video, there's my email address in the about section of this YouTube channel. Go check it out. If you want me to continue this series, please let me know in the YouTube comments. And if you have a specific question, a specific doubt that you want to clear, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. All right, with that said, let's uh, get uh, started. The All right, first thing first, what we're going to do is we're going to open the Open Zeppelin Wizard. And what we are going to do over here is like get an ERC20 token which we can vest. All right. So let's say I want to pre mint 10,000 of these tokens and I don't want anything else. I'll just open it in Remix. Once it is open in Remix, I'll just increase the font so that it is visible to you. All right. So this is the ERC20 token that we have received from Open Zeppelin. The next thing that we'll do is create a new file called vesting. Oops vesting.sol so in this file we'll just go ahead and copy these solidity and spdx license identifier and create a new vesting contract now the first thing that i'll write is called a constructor which will be called when we deploy the smart contract and the constructor uh, takes the address of token as its argument now the token that we know is going to be an ierc20 token right so what I'm going to do is uh, wrap underscore token address as an IERC20 token and I'll just save that in a token like this and to do that first I will need a variable called token over here. Now I have my auto compile on and which is showing me that there's an error that I don't have IERC20 class. So what I'm going to do is just copy this over here and um, just paste it with ERC20 being turned into IERC20.sol. So now I have the IERC20 class or contract actually interface, not even contract, it's an interface uh, which I have stored as a token over here. So this will be the address of our token that we receive from here. So now that we have that, what we'll do is create a new function called lock and this function will accept uh, uh, from the another thing that it will, it will accept is the amount and I guess expiry is also important. Oh, also we will need a receiver. Okay. Uh, I don't think we will need anything else. So let me just open this function. Also, uh, what I do is I'll make this function external so that we can call this. Great. So we have an external function over here. So the first thing that we will do is just call transfer sorry token dot transfer from and then the, it will have from uh, the two will be address this and the amount will be underscore amount so first thing first we will transfer the token from uh, from whatever address to us so to do that before this we need to make sure that our smart contract is approved for this token to take some tokens from us or whoever is calling. So yeah, once we have done that, uh, the next thing that I want is I want to store the receiver. So I'll just store receiver like this with an underscore receiver and then uh, I need to have this uh, address receiver over here. 
another thing that i will need is a un256 amount that i will need to store i will also need to store the expiry okay and uh, so let me just go ahead and write like this so that i can store all these values great uh, so everything is done we have implemented the lock function so just for good measure so that somebody cannot call this again i'll also create a new logged variable which you know starts off as a false and in the meanwhile i'll also make everything public great so i have everything as public and once i have called the lock function i'll just set locked as true and before i do anything else i'll require that uh, we have not locked this function this uh, these these tokens if we have already logged we will just say we have already logged tokens so now that we have a lock function this is the function that the smart contract or the company should call to lock tokens for a specific investor or a specific founder or whatnot and the next thing that we will need to create is a function called withdraw function and withdraw function needs to be an external function and what it should do is to transfer the tokens to the receiver with the specified amount now once you know we have withdrawn we will also create a new variable called let's say claimed which will be set to false and then uh, before we do anything what we'll do is make sure that it has not been claimed otherwise uh, tokens have already been claimed okay so before we transfer what we do is we set claimed to true if we don't do this there is a, there might be a chance where you know uh, we suffer a re-entrancy re attack so just, just go with this okay uh, make sure to set the variables of a contract before you call other contracts or other external addresses for that matter we have done the claim part but another thing that we forgot to do is the expiry like anybody can call this function anytime so what we'll do is just create a new require which is block dot timestamp should be greater than expiry okay otherwise what we can do is write tokens have not been unlocked that's it tokens have not been unlocked <laughs> so this is a lock function this is the withdraw function the withdraw function we will call once we can withdraw uh, the lock function is the function that we will first call to just lock the tokens and after that i'll just also create a new get time function so that it is easier for us to just make sure that right now what is the current time and not all right so uh, this will return a u into 56 and it's going to be a view function and it will return time with log dot timestamp awesome uh, i believe this is more than enough for vesting so let's just go ahead and deploy our token first the token has been deployed i've copied the tokens address and the next thing that i'll do is select vesting.sol the vesting.sol contract comes over here uh, and then i basically enter the address over here and click transact and the vesting token has been deployed you can see uh, the amount and everything right now nothing has been set except the token so what we're going to do is we're going to lock the some tokens over here now before we do that let's say just directly we want to go ahead and lock some tokens for this second address i just enter their receiver and since i have pre-minted the tokens i will have all the tokens the total supply you can see and you can also see the amount of tokens that are held by me they are the same so uh, the tokens will be from my address and let's say i want to give them the 10 percent of the amount so i'll just remove one zero or actually one percent of the amount so i'll re remove two zeros and uh, the expiry i will just set to the ending by 90 okay now if i click transact this transaction will fail and you can see the transaction has failed it reverted with uh, ERC20 insufficient allowance okay so we have not allowed this smart contract uh, to be able to call transfer from from my from my address okay so i'll just copy their address uh, this smart contract address and i'm going to approve the spender 
So this is the, the smart contract will be the spender and the amount will be let's say the whole amount. I want to approve the whole amount and click on transact. Now once this transaction succeeds and then we try to do this, the transact should work and lo and behold it did work and this time if you see the total supply has not changed but my balance has changed by uh, one percent okay and who holds the other amount uh, this this smart contract holds it okay the expiry time is ending with 7190 and the current time would be more than that which is 7229 so right now we can withdraw this okay anybody can withdraw this uh, so let's say i'm just calling this from my own address uh, but the withdrawal will happen to this receiver address which is the second address over here so if i click on withdraw anybody can click on withdraw at this point because the expiry time has gone if we click on withdraw the transaction succeeds and you can see that the balance of the contract turns to zero and the balance of this address will be one something something okay now i want to send again let's say same amount of money to that contract and this time the expiry that i want will be ending with um let's say 390 okay so i click on transact the transaction failed because i cannot reuse the same contract so to reuse this uh, is a big pain so what i'll have to do is i'll just copy this and paste it over here click transact uh, i will receive a new um, new smart contract uh, that you can see over here yeah here it is and then i will have to go through the same cycle again of approving and then letting them use so I'll just do this off camera quickly and then we'll see how if we try to call this before the expiry or we try to claim it again, it will fail. Actually claiming it again, we can try um, uh, try to call that, call it and you, you see if we click on withdraw again, it says tokens have already been claimed. Okay. And anyway, we don't have more tokens than you know that were given. So we cannot claim it again like it will just throw an error when we try to transfer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this smart contract uh, as the approval over here and I click on transact. So now that smart contract has approval uh, for me to use. So I can just copy the address from which is mine. I can also copy the receiver which is the second address which you know currently has a balance of one and then something something okay the amount is going to be the same amount that i had given earlier and the expiry now this time will be ending with let's say i want to make this 500 okay so 100 seconds of expiry we have in real world what you will do is you will set this to one year or two years or three years or four years or five months or ten months or whatever you want so if you want a user to receive let's say tokens in four batches one year two year three year four years you put them in four different smart contracts and that just makes it very easy to understand what's going on of course you can go ahead later on you know create your own ways to generalize this with one smart contract but that is a little out of scope for today. However, if you want to understand how that works, please leave a YouTube comment. Let me know, ask for that video and then I will go ahead and make it. Okay, uh, so while I was talking, uh, 50 seconds have gone. So uh, I don't think I will have enough time to just work with this. So I'm going to turn this to 530. Okay, and then I click on transact. So if you check the expiry now, it's 5350. If you check the claimed, it's false. If you check the amount, uh, that is the amount that the, user, the, the receiver will receive and this is the token address. Okay. So now if we try to uh, click on withdraw now and you can just check the time right now, the time is uh, less than 530. If I click on withdraw, it will give us an error. Tokens have not been unlocked. So if I click again, it will give an error again, again, error again, again, error again. Uh, because the time right now is 502 and we have expiry of 530. So again, it will give error, again, it will give error. And if I just wait for 19 more seconds, it will not give an error. And literally, 
anybody can call this withdraw now of course while just talking to you i realized uh, if the funds have not been logged yet you should not allow anybody to call withdraw because what they can do is uh, just set the claim to true right so instead of so just you know what we'll also do is add a require statement that you know the funds have been locked funds have not been locked so okay so if we do that nobody can call withdraw just like that before it the funds have been locked okay now if you check the time is more than the expiry and now uh, before i click withdraw you can see the balance is still one something something okay and now this time i call withdraw the transaction succeeds and this time the balance is two something something okay so this is how you do vesting now you can do this for your own discipline as well let's say you want to hold a token for at least four years and you know that the market volatility will make you sell so just put them in a vesting contract and just don't touch them you can also do this with eat for eat what you will do is make this uh, function payable and then the amount that you you know this function sort of receives uh, you can basically receive that amount from message dots dot value or you can convert your ETH into WETH tokens and then WETH will work similarly with these IRC20 tokens. And that is pretty much it. This was the simplest vesting contract that I can think of that I can understand and explain to you. If you want to make a more generalized smart contract, please let me know in the YouTube comments. They are going to be a little more difficult to understand to execute but we will persevere on that i hope you liked today's video if you did please hit that like button nobody likes the videos nobody comments on the videos i don't know what's going on with you guys if you like my antics please subscribe to this channel if you want to con contact me if you want to contact me for some consultation for video sponsorship my email address is in my YouTube channel's about section, so just go check it out over there. And if you have a specific question, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. I hope to see you again next week. Till then, bye-bye.